New Zealand's Education Minister Chris Hipkins is set to become the country's next Prime Minister. Mr Hipkins was the sole nominee for the Labor Party leadership and will be confirmed as leader by party MPs at a meeting tomorrow afternoon. It follows the resignation of Jacinda Ardern earlier this week. Hipkins says he is looking forward to a strong working partnership with Australia. There is a Labor government in Australia, a Labor government in New Zealand. Of course, that means that we've got a, we're going to have a good working relationship. Uh, he's had a very solid working relationship with Jacinda Ardern. Um, I think from our conversation this morning, which was very warm, um, I'm absolutely sure that we're going to have a, a very good working relationship as well. I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed being a minister in Jacinda Ardern's government. Uh, I think the New Zealand public have seen the work that I have done. Uh, I've, uh, you know, dealt with some challenging situations uh, over the last uh, five and a half years, the last couple of years particularly. Uh, and, I'll, you know, uh, I'm a human being. Uh, I'll make the odd mistake from time to time. I try and own the mistakes that I make. Uh, I don't pretend to be someone that I'm not. Uh, look, I accept when I put my name forward for this job that I open myself up to a lot of scrutiny uh, and a lot of criticism. I go into this job with my eyes wide open of knowing what I've, uh, what I've stepped into. Simon Mersep is a reporter with New Zealand's One News. He says that Chris Hipkins already appears to be an engaging leader. Yeah, because he is known as uh, Mr Fix Meredith, that's probably no surprise to New Zealanders that he is uh, being put forward as the new Prime Minister. You mentioned in your introduction he's been our Education Minister, but in the last couple of years he's stepped up to some very, very high prof profile roles, becoming the COVID Response Minister, which meant that New Zealanders were seeing him almost every day uh, on their television screens reporting on the progress of the government's response to COVID. And then in more recent months he's taken over over another very uh, busy role and one that's had a degree of controversy around it as he's become our police minister. Uh, in New Zealand in the last year or so, the issue of youth crime, uh, we're talking young kids uh, running around committing a retail crime has become a, a big issue here and he's had to step forward and address that as well. So he's been seen in a variety of roles particularly in the last year. New Zealanders have got used to his, uh, his face on their screens and hearing them. Uh, and no surprise that in some of the polls leading up to the announcement today, his name was the one that was very much at the top of list that people seem to know about. OK, so what type of leader do you think he will be? Well, what we've seen so far is that he is engaging with people and um, is a clear communicator with the media. Um, he, you'll note in that... Uh, piece of um, video you just played, he talked about uh, being a human and, and making mistakes. Um, it seems to be something which uh, the government has focused on and trying to uh, take away take away some of the heat away from politicians, which Jacinda Ardern definitely dealt with in her term as Premier. One example of his um, uh, off-the-cuff style that endeared him to some was during a, quite, quite a famous incident, Meredith, during a uh, press conference during the COVID response time. He meant to say that people could get out and stretch their legs. He inadvertently said they could get out and spread their legs. It caused quite a degree of merriment uh, and around the country. But it was just an example of a, a little mistake that he turned into a, a, a way to show that he's human and allowed people perhaps to endear uh, himself to them. Now, I'm sure it's been a very hectic last couple of days since Jacinta Ardern announced her resignation. What has been the public response to all these changes? It's been interesting. It'd be fair to say it's been quite a divided response, both amongst uh, the public in terms of the comments we've heard in the media and, and amongst media commentators as well. Uh, some people have definitely felt it was a, a reasonable thing for Jacinda Ardern to move on, given what the stress that she talked about in her job that she said she had no more in the tank to give uh, so some people have lamented that um, but she did have her detractors uh, and uh, in as the the term of the government moved on some of the very very strong support that the labor party had at the beginning of its term began to fade away as more and more frustrations emerged around the management especially of the COVID response um, to do with mandates and the like so uh, no, the, the, I think the feeling is that um, there's a few months now for Chris Hipkins to make some sort of mark. 
whether or not it, the departure of Jacinda Ardern is as much of a blow to Labour as you some might think that remains to be seen. Uh, but Chris Hipkins is a well-known figure. He's to the public. It's up to him now to take these few months to try and sell himself even further. So you mentioned he's got to try and sell himself. How is the Labour Party currently standing in the polls? Well, as I mentioned, that there's no doubt their popularity has faded in our one news polls over the last year or so. We've moved from a position where Labour, together with its coalition partner, the Greens, were in a clear position to govern, obviously. And that has slowly eroded over recent polls to the point where in the most recent, uh, the National Party opposition, together with its uh, preferred coalition partner, the ACT Party, are now in a position to be ahead of a, a Labour Green a government. So right now, uh, the opposition is in the, the driving seat and it's up to the government. To